Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So we have got a couple of brand new releases from Lightning Mods, one of them being a brand new version of ETA Hen, as well as Items Flow. And then there is an SDK that he has provided as well. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at what is in that version. And then we're going to try it live on my PlayStation 5. Okay, so over on X, we see that ETA Hen 1.8b has been released. Some of the key features is it has a rewrite, which has improved reliability, replaced debug settings with the new ETA Hen toolbox. There is this custom plugin loader and then improved overall stability and then a few other things. If we go ahead and jump over to the GitHub repo here, we can see that the other two items that wasn't mentioned there was added the following new settings for K-Log, Start Option, Rest Mode, and then so forth, and then added the ability to install the store straight on your PS5. And then it was mentioned that there is a few more for people to find. Now, with a new ETA Hen release means that there's typically a new items flow release. Okay, and so taking a quick look at items flow, what we can see in this release is, is that there is a new Game Dumper version 2 that is out now. There is also items flow patches, so you can do things like startup cheats, uh, 60 frames per second patches. Uh, you know you can do things like no intro. Uh, fixed an issue when you had a hundred plus games installed, and then added a ETA Hen game playtime to items flow. DLC dumping support has now been added, and then there was a few kind of quality of life improvements here to make things you know easier if you don't have some of these things already installed and then a few more so you can obviously head over to pkg zone right here and then scroll down to the bottom and then again depending on which system that you're wanting to try this out for you can just download it right here or again, you can just use the homebrew store. So I think at this point, we should go ahead and take a look at ETA Hen 1.8b. Okay, so back over on my PlayStation 5, I am just using Idle Sauce's source because it's absolutely one of the best ones and it is always up to date. And it looks like that one got us in. Okay, so if you are using Idle Sauce's site here then you will notice that right here it does show that ETA hen 1.8 beta is out so in order to begin using this we will need to click right here on ETA hen and from here you'll start to see a couple of messages pop up so there we can see right now what has automatically been loaded and now let's just go ahead and go back to our home and I'm going to go over to settings here and I'm going to scroll all the way down and right here is where it will begin. If we click on where it says debug settings, now we can see this brand new option called ETA Hen Toolbox. So the very first option is package installer and this will obviously install any of your PKGs. So if I had have had a USB drive connected, it would have shown those. So then you will see there is an option here called plugins. Now, right now, we don't have any plugins added. We will need to install items flow in order to have some options. But for right now, this is where you will eventually be able to come in and enable or disable the plugins. And there is this option here called utilities and inside utilities you can come right here and you can allow the slash data access in app sandboxes so the slash data directory is where we store a number of different things if you turn this on then other apps can actually access outside of just their folder but then the full slash data directory 
The option is turned on by default. I don't know if I would want that turned on by default, but I probably will just go ahead and turn that back off. And it says right here, changes will be applied next reboot. So I'm going to press OK there. Now you can turn this option on here to allow FTP access to the slash dev directory. For the most part, as an end user, you don't want to do that because obviously you can break your console. And then there is this option here to enable PS5 debug by Sistro and Goldhen. For the most part, you're going to want to go ahead and to turn this option on, especially if you're planning to do some cheats and things of that nature. The next option in here is for the rest mode. So this is rest mode options. And this is really to help with some of the stability of rest mode. I know we've all had a number of different issues coming in and out of rest mode with ETA hen. So this may help it a little bit. So the very first option here is you can change a delay of the toolbox activation. So I think I'm actually going to set that in mind for five seconds here. I think that should be good. The next option is to automatically kill the ETA hen services when entering rest mode and then coming back out, you will need this HenV plugin. Now, don't worry, you'll get all of that in just a moment. The last option here is to automatically close open games when entering rest mode. I definitely wouldn't want my games closed, so I'm going to leave that option as is. Now, I'll press circle here. And the very last option in utilities is to turn on the Blu-ray activation. Now, I've went ahead and activated all of these for my console. This just makes that a little bit easier to find. Again, you could have previously done that through debug settings, but here it's just a little bit easier. The next option that you'll see here is called services. So we'll go into services. And now by default, all of these are on, but I will say that unless you're going to use them, I would probably turn a few of these back off. So for FTP, I would always leave that one running. For the K-Log server, I would absolutely turn that off. That is typically a lot of debugging information that only developers would need. And then there is the direct package installer. I currently am not using that, but if you are using it, then obviously keep it on. But if you're like me and you maybe do kind of the old school method of inserting a USB drive and installing them, then you can turn that service back off. Okay, so we will go back again and the next option here is to install the homebrew store. Now, this is really nice that this has been included simply because on my system right here, I don't have it installed. And if I do want to install it, then I simply can come right in here. I can press on the X button. And as you can see right there, it says the store is now downloading. So after you click on it and it finishes downloading, then we'll go back to the home menu and we can see right there is the homebrew store and it says that it is ready to play. Now, what's nice about this is, is that I could come right into that homebrew store and I could go ahead and I could update items flow. Now, I will say if you've already got items flow installed on your system and you are wanting to update it. So here, for example, on this box, I have 1.06 installed. I would recommend just coming in here and just deleting it personally. And then I would come back into the homebrew store here. And then you don't have to go very far because it's the very first item once this loads. And that is going to be the items flow game manager. So from here, I'm going to press download and install, it is going to just automatically do all the magic in the background there. So you can see right now it is downloading and then it will get that installed. Now there is this option here that says automatically open after ETA hen loads. So you can press X on this and once ETA hen loads, you could go ahead and go straight to items flow. Now, this is especially crucial if you basically use this to play a bunch of your games. 
which is what I do. So I am going to press OK on this button here because I want items flow to just load automatically. And then finally, there is some credits in here. Thanks for shouting me out, Lightning Mods, for putting me in the credits. Uh, definitely, if you contribute and you put stuff in his Kofi or help him out, then he will include you in the next version of this. So that is the ETA Hen Toolbox. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the Items Flow Game Manager. Now, right off the bat, we did install this through the Homebrew Store, and we are running version 1.07. So let's go ahead and let's launch the game now. And what you'll see right here, it says new ETA Hen plugins installed, reboot for the plugins to activate. So we're going to press OK here, and there is our games currently installed. So what I'm going to do here is we are going to just go ahead and do a quick reboot. So we're going to go power and then restart our PlayStation 5. Okay, my PS5 has rebooted, so I'm just going to rerun the jailbreak again. Okay, and there we are. We're going to go to ETA Hen. Now that we have installed Items Flow, we should have all of the plugins. So when we run it this time, there should be a number of different things that is loaded. So let's go ahead and load ETA Hen. And right there, you can see all of those additional items being ran. And there's PS5 debug. We are in great shape. Okay, so now if you go back to settings and we scroll down to debug settings and we go over to plugins, there we can see those two plugins have been added. So the first one is the cheats plugin. This is all of the cheats that I believe Illusion has been working on. And then there is the ELF loader plugin, which just basically allows you to send ELF files. Now, if you don't want to run both of these, or maybe you know you're not going to be sending any ELF files over, then you can come in here and you can toggle this and it will automatically kill that plugin from running. Now on my system, I am going to leave it just like this because I would like to have access to those cheats. So now if I go back to items flow and maybe I take, for example, my Bloodborne game here. So I'm gonna press X. I could now come over here to trainers. And if I didn't have any of the patches, then I could just simply update them from right here. So I could go yes on this and we're gonna press okay here. And now I press the X button again. I can see that I have access to all of these different patches. So there is a number of different patches that's available in here. And now in this example, if I wanted to turn on the skip intro by pressing X, then I could. So I'm going to press X and that one is now turned on. I could come back in here and I can see that it says patch enabled equals true. And then if I wanted to come in here and maybe we will turn on 60 frames per second. So I'm going to press X on that and we can see that that 60 frames per second has been added. Now in this example, I actually have the physical copy and this is a retail game, but this would obviously work if you had a fake package too. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this into my PlayStation 5. And there you can see the disc has been recognized by items flow. And we're going to press launch here. We should not have any sort of intro. And then it should be running the 60 frames per second patch. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so it shows two patches have been applied. And there we go, there was no intro. So we're going to go to play offline. And then you can see right there, it says this 60 frames per second patch was made with love by Lance McDonald. So anyway, very, very cool stuff. Now there was a ton of other changes in items flow, which I'll probably make another dedicated video for. But let's switch back to the PC and let's talk a tiny bit about that SDK. So we can see right over here from Lightning Mods, he released this statement saying, the ETA Hens SDK has been released. 
with GitHub Actions to auto build. The following are examples included in this release. So some example plugins, as well as some example else. Now you can jump right over here to this GitHub link. And not only will you find those samples, but also he gives a bit of an explanation about ETA hen else versus plugins. Now, again, for the most part, this is going to be out of what an end user is going to be looking to do, but I did want to make that available to the developers that watch my channel. Anyways, if you do want to donate to Lightning Mods, he does have a Ko-Fi page and you can simply come here and donate to him if you wish to do so. Anyway, thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Michael out.